What's up you guys, my name is Griffin and today we're gonna to be flying the DJI Inspire 3 in the beautiful Mount Diablo foothills as you can see right behind me. I'm gonna be doing dual operator with my boy Lucian. I'm gonna link his YouTube channel down in the description for you guys to check out. I've been flying on a DJI Mavic Air 2 for nearly five years now, so I was really excited to get to experience Lucian's Inspire 3 and see how powerful it really was. We got to our launching spot about a half hour before sunset, so we were able to catch some really nice golden hour light on the hills. We started off with attaching the propellers, and then for today's shoot we used the Zenmuse X9 8K Air for the camera. Despite being a drone camera, this is still by far the highest performance camera I've ever shot on, with full frame, dual native ISO, and capable of 8K RAW at 75 frames per second. As you would expect from a large Hollywood level drone like this, it's not just some run and gun drone that you can just throw on the ground, launch into the air and start getting your shots with. Uh, it takes some time to set up. It'll typically take you at least 10 minutes to set up, especially if you're using the dual operator mode and you have a friend controlling the gimbal on that second controller. The dual operator feature was actually one of the coolest parts about experiencing flying this drone because you have one person fully dedicated to flying the drone, moving it around and getting it back safely and the other person pretty much dedicated to the cinematography by controlling the gimbal and deciding how fast to pan and tilt and what kind of shots you want to get. Now speaking of the Inspire 3's camera capabilities, it comes equipped with an FPV camera. Nearly every other drone does not have that and that's part of what you're paying $16,000 for with this drone. This camera has a 1 over 1.8 inch sensor and a 161 degree field of view, meaning you can see way more around the drone when you're flying. The older Inspire 2 also had an FPV camera, but the feed was pretty low res and grainy, especially in low light. But the Inspire 3's FPV gives you 1080p at 60fps, giving you much smoother and sharper monitoring. So whether you're flying solo or with a dedicated gimbal operator, the FPV camera lets you focus on flying while keeping the shot framed with the main camera. And with 360 degree gimbal movement, the main camera might be pointing somewhere else, but the FPV feed keeps you oriented. Another thing that felt so different about flying such a beast of a drone is you have to be a lot more intentional about the types of shots that you get because even when you're shooting in 4K on a smaller drone, you know, you can have the camera rolling for the entire time that the drone is up in the air if you want. But with the Inspire 3, when you're shooting such high quality, high resolution shots, you have to be a lot more sparing about how much footage you're getting because even a couple minutes is going to produce tens of gigabytes of footage on your drone. But this isn't just a bad thing because it makes you a lot more careful about planning out your shots and putting a lot of attention to detail into each one. Although this camera can shoot in up to 8K, today we just shot in 4K because we didn't need that extremely high video quality, but we shot in the ProRes 422 codec, which allowed for a much better color depth and compression algorithm compared to codecs that most other 4K footage is shot in. So even when you're just shooting in 4K, like I would on my Sony a7R 3 for example, the file sizes that you get are going to be way, way larger, and just one minute of footage is going to come out to around 5 gigabytes in size. We had a few fully charged batteries with us today, so we started about a half hour before sunset and kept shooting until about an hour past sunset. And in the later clips that you see, we're really, really pushing the ISO, but even in the darkest parts of the shadows, you really can't see much noise. Whereas with any other smaller, especially older drones, you're gonna be really restricted in terms of how much you can push your ISO without seeing noise. But flying such a high quality drone like this, you're really not gonna have to worry about that too much until it gets completely dark. 